House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, Jerry Nadler, they say that we're in a constitutional crisis yeah. uh, because the Justice Department's not turning over the full unredacted Mueller report mm -hmm. and the underlying materials. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Are we in a constitutional crisis? I think we probably are. I mean, listen, a constitutional crisis is defined is generally when the, the, the system that we set up with the checks and balances when each of the independent co-equal branches of government fails to perform its duties. And I think that we are seeing a breakdown of responsibilities. We saw it last week in the bar hearing. We're seeing it in terms of a failure to comply with subpoenas. Um, you know, now being a member of the United States Congress in the Senate, I am seeing up close where the, um, there is a failure to respect the, the significance of Congress's duty to perform a role of oversight over the administration, over the agencies. I'm seeing a failure to appreciate the importance of testifying before Congress in a way that is straightforward and truthful. So I think yes, I think it is fair to say that we are looking at a crisis, not only of confidence, but um, potentially a, a constitutional crisis, yeah. President Trump, as you know, slapped higher tariffs on Chinese exports on Friday morning, mm -hmm. um, dialing up pressure for a, a trade deal with the Chinese. Yeah. Now, your leader, uh, Chuck Schumer, tweeted earlier this week saying, quote, hang tough on China, President Trump, don't back down. Do you agree with Leader Schumer that President Trump's doing the right thing when it comes to the Chinese? I think that part of the failure of this administration on foreign policy as a general matter is that this um, president and this administration have failed to understand that we are stronger when we work with our allies on every issue, China included. China's an ally? No, meaning working with our allies to, to address China in terms of the threat that it, it, it presents to our economy, the, the, the threat it presents to American workers and American industries. But, we, but instead, this president seems to believe and it has a preference for conducting trade policy, economic policy, foreign policy by tweet. And that's irresponsible. It is um, a display of, of, of a president who thinks that, I, I, apparently, that unilateral action is better than working with the friends to address issues that not only impact our country, but impact the globe. And I think it puts us in a weaker position. As a more broad manner, President Trump, on the campaign trail in 2015-16, and as president, says trade deals in this country by Democratic presidents and by Republican presidents have been too tilted towards helping corporations and helping Wall Street and too tilted against the middle class and the manufacturing sector. Do you disagree with that premise? I believe that there is no question that over many decades the rules have been written in a way that have been to the exclusion of lifting up the middle class and working people in America and working families in America. And in fact, that's why I am proposing that one of the things that we do to address that is that we reform the tax code in a way that will give middle class working families uh, that are making less than $100,000 a year a $6,000 tax credit that they can receive it up to $500 a month. But on the subject of trade, it doesn't sound like you disagree with the president on his premise, on his general argument that the middle class keeps getting screwed by these trade deals and he's trying to renegotiate better deals. I believe that we have got to have policy that better protects American workers and American industries. I believe very strongly that we have to have policies that understand that as it relates to the issue of trade, as it relates to the issue of various countries, including China, which we just talked about, that we have to supply and equip the American worker with the skills and the resources that they need mm -hmm. to thrive, not only survive, but thrive. Trade has been uh, drawing some dividing lines in the democratic field. When it comes to NAFTA, for example, uh, Bernie Sanders, one of your opponents, attacked Joe Biden, another one of your opponents, last week, saying, quote, I helped lead the fight against NAFTA. Biden voted for NAFTA. Who was right on NAFTA, Biden or Sanders? Well, I'm not going to choose between the two of them, but well, I'll tell would you. Would you have voted for NAFTA? I would not have no, voted for NAFTA, and uh, because I believe that we can do a better job to protect American workers. I also believe that we need to do a better job 
in terms of thinking about the priorities that should be more apparent now perhaps than they were then, which are issues like climate, the climate crisis and what we need to do to build into these trade agreements. We saw another deadly school shooting uh, this week yeah. in Colorado. Mm -hmm. uh, Cory Booker has called for creating federal gun licenses, which would require mm -hmm. fingerprints, an interview, and mm -hmm. a gun safety course. Opponents of this say it would uh, essentially create a way for the government to, to track gun owners. Would you support a federal gun license? I like the idea, but you know, Jake, I'm going to tell you on this issue of the need for gun safety laws, um, we're not at any loss for good ideas. People have been having good ideas for decades on this issue. What we're at a loss is for people in Congress to have the courage to do something. We, and, and you know, I'm going to tell you on this subject, we're not waiting for the, the, the worst tragedy because we've seen the worst of tragedies, including what just happened this week. And, 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 and seeing the heroism of a child who we now mourn his loss, his parents' only child. We're not waiting for tragedies, and we are not waiting for good ideas. Universal background checks, check, really good idea. You might want to know if someone has been proven to be a danger to themselves or others before they can buy a lethal weapon. So what we're waiting for is Congress to have the courage to act. And so let me tell you what I'm proposing. I'm proposing, one, that if by my 100th day in office when elected President of the United States, mm -hmm. the United States Congress fails to put a, a bill on my desk to sign with all of the good ideas or any of the good ideas, then I am prepared to take executive action because that's what's needed. Executive action, action. To, to do what? To do specifically for anyone who sells more than five guns a year, they will be required to perform background checks on the people they sell them to. And this will be the most comprehensive background check policy that has ever been had in our country thus far. Can that I be done prepared. by executive order? Yes. Yes, it can. I am also prepared to say and to direct the ATF to remove and take away the licenses of gun dealers who fail to follow the law. And Jake, 90% of the guns that are associated with crime have been sold by 5% of the gun dealers. We need to take their licenses away. I think the last time I saw you was the town hall. Mm -hmm. um, I want to ask you about something you said that night. You said on stage with me in January that when it comes to private insurance, quote, let's eliminate all of that, let's move on. Yes. Now you later said we don't need to get rid of all private insurance. So. But let's clear what, that. What, what, which, is, which is it exactly? We were, well, we were together. Yes. And you'll remember and roll the tape, please. Yeah, we can roll the tape. <laughs> that, well, you support uh, the Bernie Sanders bill, which essentially gets I rid of insurance. I support Medicare for all, but I really do need to clear up what yes. happened on that stage. Okay. It was in the context of saying, let's get rid of all the bureaucracy. Let's get all of the ways. Oh, not the insurance companies. No, that's not what I meant. I know it was interpreted that way. If you watch the tape, I think you'll see that there are obviously many interpretations of what I said. What I meant is let's get rid of the bureaucracy. As it relates but the bill to Medicare, gets rid of insurance. But, but no, no, no. It does not get rid of insurance. It does not get rid of insurance. And 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 listen, and let me just tell you where I am. Let's okay. tell you where I am. All right. I support Medicare for all. It is my preferred um, as a policy. principle, you mean, not Bernie Sanders' bill. I support the bill. Okay. I support the bill. Well, because I the bill gets rid of private insurance for everything. That it doesn't is, get rid for, of supplemental for, insurance. Right, for, for cosmetic surgery, but for all... So it doesn't get rid of all insurance. Okay, it doesn't get rid okay. of all insurance, right. but for all essential health care benefits. But, you, but why? Ask the question why. The question, if, the answer to that question, is because Medicare for all and the vision of what it will be includes an expansion of coverage. So Medicare for all will include vision, it'll include dental, it'll include hearing aids. There are a lot of members of unions, for example, who like their private insurance right. and the plans that have been negotiated right. on their behalf and right. don't want that replaced. Well, listen, let me just tell you something. I completely agree with those, those members of organized labor who have negotiated for plans and have in, in those negotiation processes, um, processes often given up what could have been higher wages in exchange for a higher coverage for health care. Right. And we, gotta, we have to address that. It's a legitimate concern which must be addressed. The bill also says, quote, every individual who is a resident of the United States is entitled to benefits for health care services under this act. Not every individual who's a citizen, but every individual who's a resident. Mm -hmm. So you support giving universal health care, Medicare for all, to people who are in this country illegally? Let me just be very clear about this. I am opposed to any policy that would deny in our country any human being 
from access to public safety, public education, or public health, period. 